Columbus Archaeology Program, and today I am filming from a construction project that's along Service Road on campus. We've been out here for, I think, about four weeks now, and I wanted to give you a look into the kinds of work we do. Now, I'll preface this that normally I wear a mask because of the pandemic, so I'm taking it off so I can do this video. There's no one around me. I am filming this on my own. So what happens on a construction project is that months and months, sometimes years before a construction project happens, we are notified by Infrastructure Planning and Facilities, IPF, here on Michigan State University's campus that construction is planned for a certain part of campus. And so the MSU Campus Archaeology Program begins conducting research on that parcel of land to find out what may be underneath the ground. So we're trying to do research before construction happens um, so that we can either recover artifacts before construction happens or do something called monitoring, which means being on the construction site while construction is taking place. Some of you may know that a lot of archeological deposits are often covered by feet and feet and feet, meters and meters and meters of fill. And so sometimes we have to wait until the construction equipment happens, uh, there's a backhoe, hold on. Uh, I'm sorry. This is what happens on a construction site, right? So often we'll find archeological deposits or sites many, many feet, many, many meters below the ground surface because when they were building a road or a building, the construction folks put meters and meters and feet and feet and feet of fill of dirt over that ground to level it. Uh, so, so often we have to wait until construction happens for us to find anything. And that's what's happened here today. Um, we have been monitoring, as I said, for the last month. And as they were digging up part of a road that here on campus, they hit a huge trash dump, what we call an archeological midden of artifacts that seem to be predominantly dating to the 1940s and 50s, although we do have some that are dating to earlier, early 1900s. I don't think we have anything yet that dates to the late 1800s. We found some newspaper that has specific dates of 1958 and 1957, uh, which is really exciting. Uh, so you're probably wondering, what do I do? Well, sometimes I watch the construction equipment that's out there that you may be able to see and watch as they're digging to see if artifacts are coming up as they're excavating. Uh, I also go through what we call the back dirt, or in construction language, they call the spoils. And that's what I'm doing right now today. And if you turn and look kind of to my side, I'm new at this here, so you're going to have to forgive me. You can see that there are two dirt piles here. Uh, one is really, really kind of an ashen layer that was from coal that was burning, and presumably a historic building. And then the one that's behind it that's larger, that's kind of this, this light brown color, not this dark gray, black ashen layer that's right behind me. Um, that is clay and fill that was put over the road at some point to level the landscape. So in this ashen layer that's right behind me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my trowel and start to kind of, and this is my trowel here, there you go, I have gloves on to be safe, gloves are really important, sorry, this is what your day is like on a construction site, very loud. You have to pay attention to what is going on. Sometimes um, they'll, they'll show up and want to take some of my dirt and I'll have to say, can you wait until I'm done going through it because there's artifacts. Uh, usually construction workers are very, very helpful in helping us preserve any artifacts on campus. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this trowel. I have gloves on because often there are contaminants in historic soils like lead, Asbestos, hopefully not asbestos, I don't think there's any asbestos out here, but things that we don't want to get on our hands. Um, so we wear gloves. Also, we are dealing with a lot of sharp objects, a lot of glass, which I've already cut my fingers twice on this project uh, because I was cleaning them off with water without gloves and I cut myself. So I always end up learning from my own training of telling students to wear gloves. There is a backhoe coming towards me, so I gotta wait. Just a second. So, 
got gloves on. You see I have the hat. You have to wear a hard hat when you're on a construction site. I've got a vest that has campus archaeology on the back of it so that people see me when I'm walking. Again, I always pay attention to all the construction equipment that's moving around me. I listen for noise to know if they're going to back up into me. You are supposed to stay you know, about 30 feet, 40 feet away from any sort of uh, any big construction, um, any, sorry, I'm paying attention to where the <laughs> the backhoe is going again. You need to stay away from the equipment, basically, to keep yourself safe because it's noisy where they're at and they often are um, higher than us and sometimes they can't see us depending on where we're at. So um, getting back to what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go through this dirt with my trowel, my gloves on, I don't have a glove on my other hand and kind of show you what I'm looking for. So I am looking for any artifacts um, that are what we call diagnostic, meaning that they have some sort of mark on them. Um, they may have a pattern if they're ceramic that uh, we are able to use to date the artifact. If we find things that we think are not diagnostic, meaning we can't easily date them, then we're not gonna keep them. And I will say there are Tens of thousands of artifacts on this site, lots and lots of bottles, lots of diagnostic things. So we've had to make some kind of difficult choices about what we're going to keep. We photographed all the things we found, but we've decided not to keep all of them because we don't have space in our lab to have tens of thousands of bottles. So we want to make sure that we document the amount of things we're finding, but we can't take everything because, again, we don't have space. And if we have a small sample of them, we already know what they look like and we're able to identify and date them. So I'm going to take you on the dirt pile here. One thing that's super important is wearing sunscreen because um, I am out in the heat. It's about 85 today, I think, and I don't want to get burned. So archaeologists always wear sunscreen. So I'm slowly troweling through the dirt. I don't see anything down here below. Um, on the dirt pile, there is this, let's see if I can show you here, I will, this piece of glass, and it's got a pattern on it, I don't know if you can see that, there, there, but it doesn't have what we call a maker's mark, usually that tells us who manufactured, the date of um, the manufacturer, maybe the location where it was made, and put, hopefully the contents of the bottle, which is really hard when you get to the early 1900s, because at that time, uh, companies like Coca-Cola would contract with bottle makers, and the bottle makers would make their bottles for them. And so sometimes you have a bottle with a maker's mark, but that just tells us who actually made the glass. It doesn't tell us what was in the contents. So I'm gonna put this piece of glass away because it doesn't have a maker's mark. The pattern, some would argue, is diagnostic, but I'm pretty sure we found this pattern already um, while collecting the last month. Because only a few of us, two of us, are allowed on the dig site right now, um, every time I, I grab artifacts from the site, I, um, I send photographs of them to my crew since they cannot be on campus due to the COVID pandemic. And then they can help um, participate by dating those artifacts and giving me a sense of the date of the deposit that we're looking at. So they've been a really big help, even though they can't dig, um, they have been pretty helpful. Okay, so here we found uh, a nice little ceramic here, and I'm going to wipe it off. And right now I know I'm terrible with these cameras, but it's the best we have because of the pandemic. And what I'm doing is trying to look for a maker's mark on the base of it. I'm cleaning it off. I know it's hard to see. And I am going to take my gloves off for a minute. So you're just going to have to see me in the sky for a minute. So here's this little tiny fragment here. It's got what we call a, a foot ring on the bottom. I know it's hard to see because it's in the sun. But on the bottom is there's a little foot ring. It was probably some sort of little, some sort of small ceramic, maybe a small bowl. Doesn't have a maker's mark though, so I'm gonna say bye bye to the ceramic. Now, if I was working on a site where there weren't a lot of artifacts, like say that was maybe one of the few. Sorry, I'm dumping my glove out that has dirt in it. 
one of the few artifacts we found, then we would collect it. But because we've collected so many whole ceramics, we probably have a ceramic that represents that little guy there, one with a maker's mark that allows us to identify it. So I'm just troweling through the dirt. I'm gonna walk through the dirt pile here. A lot of times the bottles kind of collect at the bottom of the dirt pile. I, that looks like a brick right down there. So I'm walking through. Oh, I see a piece of ceramic here. Let's see, what is this? So I found a piece of ceramic. I'm gonna clean it off with my glove. Oh, I've seen a lot of these. Um, we're not gonna keep it. But this is one of the, let's see if you can see it here. It's got a green annular band around it. It was probably a cup. And we have a lot of these, a lot of whole cups just like this. And they say Michigan State University or Michigan State College, which was Michigan State University's earlier name. Um, and I am throwing that little piece back because we have so many fragments that represent it. So I'm walking around the dirt pile, looking for anything that stands out. As I said, sometimes the construction equipment comes through and we've got to be really quick uh, because they're taking the dirt. And so often what I'll do is I'll walk around the dirt pile first thing I get here, when I get here on the site, and look at things that really stand out and then and grab them and then, um, then start digging through the dirt pile. Now I just found, I'm gonna take my gloves off again because I just cleaned it off. Another, probably a plate. Doesn't have anything diagnostic. Oh, actually, I shouldn't have said that. So one of the, I know you can't see it very well, but we'll have more of our artifacts on our social media so you can take a look at them. One of the, the great things about cleaning artifacts and having an on-site, meaning uh, a laboratory on-site while you're digging, an on-site lab, is that you can start figuring out what you've found and dating it as you're digging and make decisions about where you're gonna work on a site because of that work. Um, so I clean this off a little bit and I've noticed, and again, you're not gonna be able to see it very well because of the film here, but there's a flower or some sort of leaf on it. Now, this is probably a little plate and that is potentially diagnostic. So we're gonna keep that uh, I need to grab a plastic bag to put this in. Things that are small, that are fragile, we will put in a plastic bag to protect them um, so that they don't break if we have bigger bottles. And I'm just gonna give you a little sneak peek on one of the other things I found this morning. As you can see, it's sunny everywhere, so it's really not a good place. I'm gonna try to go in the shade. There we go. So this is a little bottle, some sort of medicinal bottle that we found in the dirt pile behind me. And um, we'll be able to potentially identify it. I have, I have to clean it off, clean the base off to see if there's a maker's mark, but this probably had some sort of medicine in it. Um, medicinal bottles take kind of specific forms over time. And sometimes, depending on the time period, even the color of a glass bottle can suggest that it is a medicinal bottle. So. You got a, a sneak peek of what it's like to be on a construction project uh, as an archaeologist at Michigan State University. And we'll be providing more content about this topic uh, for the next couple of months as we work. Thank you.